All right, scientists, today we are going to be um, continuing our knowledge on simple machines and that simple machines can change the amount of effort a force requires. Um, so today you are going to watch this video um, and I'm going to clarify some information that you learned from our science video yesterday with those questions. And then we're gonna go a little more in depth about each of the simple machines and their purpose. So after, um, after we go over these questions from yesterday and go over Mrs. St. Louis's um, slideshow, you are going to be getting on Seesaw and taking the little mini quiz over the information that you have learned today. You will not need to post anything on Seesaw. Um, so yesterday, these were your questions. So the first one said, um, describe a sh simple machine. Um, one thing I wanna clarify is that a lot of us were giving um, examples of simple machines. This wanted you to um, tell me what makes a simple machine a simple machi machine? So simple machines have few or no moving parts. They make work easier by changing the direction of a force or by changing the amount of force needed. So they just make things a lot easier, um, kind of like the pulley. So when it says changing um, the direction, rather than um, maybe scooting something along, maybe a pulley could drag something up. So that would change the direction. Um, same thing with like an inclined plane, um, rather than going just um, straight across the ground, um, you might not need as much force if you use that inclined plane because that ramp will make it a little bit easier for you. Um, why are simple machines so important? They are so important because they make work easier. Without them, you might not be able to move something really, really heavy, okay? Um, how does a pulley lift things? Okay, so a pulley uses a wheel to change the direction of a force. So as you pull down, the object goes up. Sometimes pulling down is easier because the force of gravity helps. So this is where our gravity comes into our force in motion here. Um, and then we have, how does a lever help move heavy objects? So a lever helps is because when you push down on one end of a lever, the other end goes up, kind of like that pulley. So when you're pushing down, your thing is coming up. Um, so the other end moves up in the opposite direction, kind of like a seesaw. Um, by moving the middle part of it, it is called the fulcrum. And I will touch on what a fulcrum is when we um, go into my slideshow. Um, but because of the fulcrum, um, it becomes easier to lift kind of like Elijah did in the video to help lift the rock. And then our last question that we talked about um, was how does the wheel and axle make it easier to move heavy objects? Well, when the ground is not smooth, so a lot like a lot of our sidewalks, um, friction can make it difficult to move those heavy things, which is what happens when things rub against each other. So a wheel and axle reduces the friction by allowing things to roll, which then makes them rub against each other less. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get out of this and we're gonna go into my slideshow today because it is going to also help you um, learn about these simple machines. Okay, so we're gonna do a little introduction to our simple machines here. What are they? So simple machines, again, are moving, are machines, sorry, with few or no moving parts that are used to make work easier. Okay, then we have our different types of simple machines. So we have our wedge, our wheel and axle, our lever, our inclined plane, our screw, and our pulley. So those should have all been ones that you learned about today, yesterday and today. Um, the first one is our wedge. Okay, so our wedge um, is what pushes materials apart or it can cut things. So here are some examples. I put some pictures just of the ones that we probably think of more often when we think of a wedge. Um, some other ones that I wanna point out are like a doorstop. We put that little doorstop in the um, edge, edge of our door, even though it's not cutting things, it's kind of um, what a wedge looks like. Um, you got your scissors here, your ax, um, knives and forks can also be used as a wedge, um, zippers, um, and the, a bulldozer is also a good example of a wedge. Next, 
we have our wheel and axle. Um, so wheel and axle, like I said, it makes it easy to move things by rolling because the rolling of the, op of the wheels reduces the friction to make it easier. Um, so some examples are your car, your bicycle, um, roller skates, um, a, shopping a shopping cart, um, and those types of things. So anything with a wheel, wheel and axle. Then you have the lever. Okay, so a lever makes lifting um, weight easier by using a fulcrum, which if you look in my seesaw picture here, that little middle piece is the um, fulcrum. So the fulcrum is the point on which the lever rests or is supported and can and it helps pivot. So that's what helps make you go up and down when you're on a seesaw. Um, so if you look at the other picture here, you see a dump truck. Um, and that's the thing that's in between. That there make, helps make the dump truck able to dump whatever in its, the bed of the truck. An inclined plane. An inclined plane makes it easier to move objects upward, but you have to go further horizontally. So even though you're going further than you would like, it's just gonna make the process a little bit easier on you because you have your load, which is your box, but you're also be able to use more force when you are pushing things up. So a highway or sidewalk ramps are good examples. Stairs, um, the conveyor belts that you see in some machines. Those are all examples of your inclined plane. Then we have our screw. Okay, our screw turns rotation into lengthwise movement. It takes many twists to go a short distance, but it holds things together. So um, some examples of those would be your screws, your clamps, your jar lids. Um, that just holds things together. Then we have our pulley. Um, so here, this makes lifting things with a rope easier by redirecting the force and the addition of additional pulleys. So if you look at the picture of the flagpole that I have here, um, your load would be your flag. You have um, a pulley, which is at kind of the top of your flagpole, um, and then you are using the force to pull the rope in the... Um, pulley system is wheeling it through. Um, same thing with your window shades. Those are another great example, window shades or blinds that are examples of pulleys. As you're pulling down, things are coming up. Then we have a thing called complex machines. Um, so this is where um, you combine two or more simple machines that work together. So an example would be a car jack, which can combine a wedge and a screw. Um, you have a tow truck, which combines a lever and a pulley. And then you also have a wheelbarrow that combines a wheel and axle and a lever. So um, if you look at the picture on the wheelbarrow, the wheel and axle obviously is at the bottom. And then you have the lever, which is where you're pushing. You have to push down um, to get the load off of that. And then you are able to pull it. So it has a combined um, complex machine. It uses two of those. Why do we use them? Okay, like I've said many, many times, it makes work so much easier, even if sometimes it takes just a little bit longer. Um, for example, going up a longer flight of stairs instead of going up a regular flight of stairs, which you kind of see like what would be in your house, instead of going up a straight ladder. It's taking you a little bit longer, but it's more efficient. Sometimes walking up those straight ladders is harder to do. So let's wrap up our thinking how this applies to um, our force in motion. Because simple machines make work easier. Remember, friction is the resistance of motion when objects rub against each other. Anytime two objects rub against each other, they cause friction. Friction works against the motion and acts in the opposite direction. So in conclusion, how does friction affect the force needed to move an object? Well, rather than sliding a box against the cement, against the cement and friction getting in your way, you could use a wheelbarrow which would be a wheel and axle, simple machine, to make your work easier. Okay, and that is the conclusion of our um, slideshow and answer some questions to clarify our thinking from yesterday. Now you're gonna head over to Seesaw and you are going to fill out that mini quiz 
Um, if you need to rewatch this video or if you just want to look at my slideshow, that is also posted in the den. And I have also posted a picture um, of a anchor chart that I created um, of the different types of simple machines. Good luck, scientists!